Hey. So I'm just sitting here thinking, you know. I got this, right? And it's part of my world, but it's an off-world vessel. It can come down to earth and everything, but... Then I have this guy, which is a scrap bot from on world that's on earth you know and I was thinking <laughs> I have the warden here um, yeah and then I also have another creature from earth which is this barren scale toad They all came out great. And there's a lot more that I want to do for what's happening on Earth in the lore of this world I'm building. But um, I was feeling I wanted to build some terrain. And I kind of wanted to kit bash some toys. And my kids have a lot of toys that. Uh, they don't use or play with um, so also I want to build some of those little foam bricks been just, just had you know this, this urge this um, this um, need to build some foam bricks and some terrain and uh, I, I think um, I think we might go steal some toys from my kids. They don't play with them anyways. It's not like they use them or they need them, you know? Like half of this was made out of their toys. They don't... They ain't missing them. They ain't been asking for them. Does that make me a bad dad? I mean, really. Do you, If you steal from your own children... And, but you're stealing something that they don't need. But they also don't use. No, I'm not a bad dad, right? No. Do you think I'm a bad dad? Yeah. The warden says no. You gotta do what you gotta do. But he's also kind of a new robot, so... I'm not a bad dad. I'm not a bad dad. I'm a good dad. I make cool things. Yeah. I'm going to start this build off with this cool little Tonka truck I found just laying around in my son's hands. I was thinking that the dump bed would make a really neat roof for some sort of outpost or small building. And in the process of tearing it apart, I might run across some other interesting shapes as well. Once I got the bed off, I gave it a quick sanding and cut out some pieces of cardboard to form some general walls. Then I pulled out a piece of scrap XPS foam, sliced off some rectangles, and cut them into some bricks. Once I had cut out enough, 
I loaded them all into this $1 tin I found at the Mighty Dollar. Threw in a rock and gave them a very unpleasant shake. Basically all this does is softens the corners of the foam and make them look less manufactured and more individual. I found this little Hot Wheels launcher. I really like the shape at the bottom of it and I thought to myself, self, that looks like a door. We should cut that out and use it as such. I used a piece of styrene to back the openings to create windows so I could be lazy and not have to decorate the interior of the building. Last thing to do was glue all four corners together and move on to some green fleece. Now some of the pieces I used came from my bits bin, but I really tried my hardest to use every piece of that Tonka truck I could to detail the side of the building. I, for the life of me, can't find anywhere in my little town that sells that beloved corrugated paper that all of these hobbyists use and rave over. But that's okay, because we can make our own by tearing off the skin of a piece of cardboard and using a butane torch, we can burn off all the little fuzzies that are left over to clean it up. Sometimes it burns through the corrugation, but we just call that free weathering. With the help of a cheap paintbrush and some Mod Podge and the magic of editing, I quickly glued on all of my foam bricks. After that, I used some stir sticks and some match sticks to help me trim it out and smooth out all the rough transitions around the building. Now you know as well as I do, children shouldn't have guns or operate heavy machinery. So I helped myself to these little bits right here in order to make my gate. Now the best thing about taking anything apart is all the things you find inside. For instance, this gun right here had all these little bullets that reminded me of howitzer shells. And this dozer, well this dozer just kind of speaks for itself. Now this might not be that difficult for you, but for me, the hardest part about kit bashing toys is trying to find shapes in any ordinary thing you look at, and then trying to find other shapes in any other thing you look at, and putting those two things together, and trying to make something out of it. Sometimes I can have a vision for what I want to build, but for me, the hardest part is trying to find those pieces that'll make that build a thing. But when you can find certain things that work, and you bring that into this world, it is really one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. Aside from like cocaine, but um, we, we try not to promote that kind of stuff around here. But I'm not trying to be judgmental. I mean, if that's what you're into, hey, more power to you. 
I've been excited for these. In our world, these bullets may be small, plastic bits of trash, but in my mind, these babies are packed with so much death and destruction, they could easily turn any mountain into a Walmart parking lot. However, due to me having these big gorilla fingers, Craft and Tiny always poses an extreme challenge. Not to mention I shake like a dog shit and tacks anytime I'm trying to do intricate little things. You can't see it here, but I struggle to put all these mash sticks and arty rounds together for a good hour or better. But, you know what they say, practice makes perfect and tools make it worth it. I don't, I don't know if they say that or not, to be honest, but that you know, kind of rhymed in my head for some reason. And and now I'm going to use it. I might even put it on a t-shirt. Actually, I don't know about that. Last time I tried to sell t-shirts, I sold like four. And I ordered like 20. So, didn't go that good. But 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 maybe maybe even a, maybe a bumper sticker. Or, or something of that nature. Anyways, this turned out good. Now this next bit was a lot of fun. I wanted to find the perfect resource to use for stucco or texture on the side of my building. I cut out three squares of cardboard and coated them with three different material. For the first one, I used drywall mud. You can get a whole three gallon bucket of this stuff for little to five bucks at the hardware store. I applied it with a putty knife and used a sponge to texture it. Now when it dries, a little bit of the texture will go away, but for the majority of it, it'll stay. For the second one, I used good old tile mortar. You can never go wrong with this stuff. I know exactly how it dries because I've used it before. And for the most part, you can mix it at whatever viscosity you want. And for the last one, I mixed up a little bit of sawdust and Mod Podge in a pail and applied it in the same fashion. Now unfortunately you won't be able to see the dried results of all of these because my kids decided to break into my studio and have themselves a field day with paint and glue and everything else they could get their little snotty hands all over. So those disappeared. I don't even know where they went. But needless to say, after it dried and I ran a second test, the mortar was the best fit. I found the mortar was easiest to apply into all the little creases along the cardboard with a clay sculpting tool. I was able to use the other side of the same tool to run it along the mortar and make some textured lines that might look like filament lines from a 3D print. And I'll explain that after we build the base. For the base I used this piece of broken clipboard. I bought a whole bunch of these for a buck a piece at the Mighty Dollar. It's made out of MDF, so for the most part it's not going to warp due to hot glue or the thermal reaction from mortar. I used a scrap piece of XBS foam to build up some elevation. I used an ensemble of tools such as my hot wire cutter, X-Acto knife, and needle nose pliers to bring this thing into existence and to make it look as realistic as I could. I applied the heel to the board using some hot glue and some Mod Podge. And once that was set, I mixed up some more mortar and I spread it all along the base to act as my sand and my terrain base. And I don't recommend using your finger for this. This stuff is cancerous, but to, uh, you know, grill the hands and all. And before my mortar had time to dry, I applied some rocks across different sections of the terrain and I used a mixture of watered down Mod Podge to adhere it all in place. These small details really help to bring out scale in the terrain, giving it flow and variation. Once it had all dried, I used a mixture of black acrylic paint and Mod Podge 
which I call Moopoo, to seal the terrain in hopes that it wouldn't suck up all the pain I was about to slap at this bad boy. Then, once everything was sealed and put in place, I took a white can of spray paint and gave it a Xenothal highlight to simulate the sun. Now, I have to apologize it took so long to get this video to you guys. I actually have been working on a short animation to help explain some of the lore about the RSG and the part they play in the world I'm making up. But that crap took forever to do, and I abandoned it for now, hoping that a simple narration instead might please your ears. I promise I'll finish and release the animation one of these days, but for now, Let's dive into the RSG and the meaning behind this diorama. The Red Sand Garrison, otherwise known as the RSG, is Mars' corporate security force. Its history spans back almost 300 years ago, a short while after Mars had been colonized and coined as humanity's red jewel in the cosmos. At first, the RSG was nothing but a thriving union for miners and trade guilds. But due to the rise of population and growth on the red planet, piracy and corruption became a known problem on and off the surface. The malevolent CEO, John Cunningham, took it upon himself, along with three of his five-star associates, to take matters into their own hands. Recruiting the first private sector of highly equipped sand rangers, the RSG would come to occupy every port, town, and corner of the planet. Many of the colonists living on Mars took to the stars in hopes of finding their own freedoms outside of corporate grass. Ultimately, this would lead to the planet's downfall and hold its rapid terraforming program and its habitability outside the Golden Zone. Today, the RSG is still the Red Planet's main occupational force, which continues to recruit and employ new faces from around the galaxy. Where there is money to be made, you can bet on the RSG sticking its claws deep inside. With little to no resistance, the RSG is one of the five leading corporations in the universe. Many of the civilians on Mars are members of the Red Sun Garrison with dreams of climbing the corporate ladder. Although members receive pay and accommodations, the corporate noose around its society remains firm. And Mars is the galaxy's most impoverished planet. Its citizens not only face stern corporate regulations, but threats from mutated wildlife introduced during the golden years, but also rebels, raiders, and religious zealots make life a sleepless circus. Remember Pathfinders, where there is opportunity, there is consequence. If you so happen to find yourself in the belly of Mariner Canyon's vast mines, Keep your eyes behind your head and your weapons loaded. The inner planets are desperate and very hostile. We don't need our mission compromised by having your head served on a titanium platter to the Cunningham Estate. Seek smarter alternatives to commerce and trust only within the guild. This broadcast is made possible by viewers like you. So anyways, to finish up this terrain, I applied an acrylic wash using a brush across every surface to weather everything and bring it a bit of uniformity, if that's even a word. Then I made up some of these propaganda posters 
and glued them to a thin sheet of polystyrene. I plastered them all over the building to make it feel lived in. And oh, sorry I didn't film the radio tower. I forgot to press record on my camera. I put on some finishing touches along with a bit of yellow static grass to wrap it all up. But before the glamour shots, I'd like to give a big shout out to my friend Mr. Kane for demolding and painting these beautiful minis for me. He nailed my aesthetic perfectly, and it was a pleasure collaborating with him. If you'd like to see his work, you could check out all his miniature paintings over on Instagram at 40 Kane. He does a really good job, and give him a follow. I'm sure he'd really appreciate that. Without further ado, let's roll the glamour shots. Thank all y'all for tuning in and watching. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and the little bell. That way you can see when I upload another video. And I hope y'all have a good day. We'll see y'all on the other end of the trail. <laughs>